My next granny square video is called the Blooming Granny. Now I have not had a chance to make this one first, so I'll be making my first one while showing you. I will most likely be referring back and forth be from the written pattern and the chart. Let me enlarge this a little bit so we see mostly what we need to look at. I decided to do pink for the yellow, of course green for the leaves, and then I like to do a yellow border because it really makes the green pop. I just hope I have enough yellow to do it. Okay, let's get started and see where we can go. Okay, to start with, it's chain four, join to a slip stitch to form a ring. Okay, that part we know, that's easy. Let's go ahead and do it. One, two, three, four. Hope you can see it okay. Then we're gonna slip stitch to make a ring. Pull the yarn through and pull it through again. Now that gives us our ring. That's kind of hard to see, but it's in there. Then round one with A, which is the ping, chain one, eight single crochets in the ring. The chain one does not count as one of the stitches from the way they're talking. I just want to make sure the tail gets incorporated in. So there's my chain one. Now eight single crochets in this ring. So there's one, two, I got caught, try again, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then you slip stitch into the first stitch to make your ring. I'm going to have to run and get my scissors. So hang on there. Okay. I have my scissors. I wanted to trim the tail and I can't do that without them. So, okay, now my tail is gone, but it's woven into the first round so I don't have to weave it. Now, round two, let me enlarge this a little bit so you can see it a little better. It says we're going to actually make what's called a popcorn. And the first half of this explains how the popcorn is done. And I'll show you how. And then I can continue doing it until I have made a total of eight, I believe. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, I have to make eight. Here it says six, oh, somewhere, six times. But that's because the first two are explained up here. Okay, so let's start with chain three, which counts as a double crochet. Then four double crochets in the first stitch. Okay, chain three. And you know me, I have to do only two because the way my, where I was taught by my grandmother. All right, so now I got to do four more in this same thing. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so it's eight. So there's one double, two doubles, three doubles. four doubles. So that actually makes five stitches. Now this is the fun part. Okay. Chain three. Uh, insert hook. Hmm. Four doubles in first stitch. Insert hook in the top of chain three. Pick up and drop the loop and tighten. Okay. So what they want you to do is drop this for the moment. Grab the one on the top of the chain three, then go back and get your first one. And then pull it through and that makes a popcorn. It makes everything kind of push together. I'll do the next couple so you can see. Okay, and then tighten chain one to complete the first popcorn. Okay, so there's my chain one. Then it says popcorn in next stitch, chain one, repeat six more times. That's how come, see there's the first one, there's a second one, and then the other six, which will make eight. So let's do eight, uh, seven more all total. So there's one, two, three, four, five, and we'll do what we did last time. Drop this one, pick up the first one, go through the last one, 
and pull it through and then chain one. I would do the next one. This time I'll enlarge the picture so you can see what I'm doing. It might help some who didn't see it while it was on the longer view. Okay, so there's two, three, four, and number five. Okay, now I'm gonna enlarge this a little bit. You go back to your first one, insert your hook in the first one, then put your hook in the last one, and pull the last one through the first one, then chain one. And that's how you get your popcorn. I hope that helped. I'll do another one. I'll go out a bit. Come on, go out. Huh. Oh, well. There's one. Two, three, four, five. Let go of that loop. Go back to your first one. Go into your last one and pull them through and chain one. Okay, I'll meet you when I get around to the other side. Okay, I'm on my last popcorn. I have two more stitches to do. So there's one, two. Release the last loop. Go back to your first loop. Grab your last loop and pull it through. Chain one. Then count to make sure. I believe I have eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Then it says to join with a slip to stitch to the top of the beginning chain three which is right up here and do a slip stitch and then I do a chain one and tighten it. Okay, so that one's done. So there's my center popcorn right there. Before I go any farther, I definitely want to weave in my tail just like I've been doing th throughout the whole videos. One less thing to worry about. Now where to weave it in? Let's see, I'll go back here and go down inside all these stitches. And I'm gonna go all the way down to the single crochet ring, just so I have a nice, secure loop. All right, so now that's finished. On to the next color, which is green. Let me get some yarn out here, okay. It says, join B to any chain one space. I don't like to, start in the beginning one because there's a lot of activity so I'll go one over so there's my chain one space and it says to join there so I put the yarn over my hook bring both through and then drop the first one so now I'm just going to be working with the the yarn that is connected to the ball Chain one, so chain three, which counts as a double crochet in now and throughout. So I only, I've already done one, two. Okay, so there it is. Two doubles in the same space. One, two. Now that's half of a corner made. Now if we look at the chart, we can see these were the popcorns. That's a symbol for the popcorn, and these are the symbol for the single crochet. Now see what I did here is I attached to the chain one space, did my chain three and my two double crochets. So this is the half corner. We'll do the other half of the corner after we go around. So then it says to chain one and do three double crochets in the next chain one space. Okay, so I'm gonna chain one, do three double crochets in this one. These way to know it's between the flowers. That's where your chain one space is. So we chain three, one, two, three, so that takes us, we did that, that, that takes us to here. So now we're gonna do a corner space. So if we look over here and we can do, check it this way, do three double crochets, chain one, three double crochets in this corner. So I do my chain one, three doubles, one, two, three, 
chain one. Now three more doubles in the same chain one space because this forms our corner. Granny squares are not a granny square without a corner. Okay, so we got that done. Then we chain one. So we can either go back here and look or look here. So we just did this part. So we only have one set of chain three, I mean three doubles on a single crochet here before our next corner, then three doubles here and then another corner. So we'll just keep going around. So this is uh, the center chain three, uh, double crochet. One, two, three, chain one. Now we've got to do the corner one in this one. So we do three doubles, chain one, three doubles. One, two, three, chain one, then do three more. One, two, three. Then we chain one and do three doubles in this one. One, two, three, then we do a chain one, three doubles, chain one, three doubles in this corner. So we're going to form another corner. One, two, three, chain one, one, two, three, and fourth corner is made. Then we chain one. We do chain uh, three doubles here. And that brings us to the second half of our first half corner. And basically to do that is you chain one, three doubles in where your first set of three doubles were. Chain one and then slip stitch together to join. So there's my three doubles, chain one, then we slip stitch to join, and then we finish off. I do a chain one and then pull it tight. Now at this point we want to weave in our tail. So see this tail is already partly wove in because it's inside here, but if we continued it across you would see that green on the back side and we don't really want the green on the back side. So generally what I do, I should have made the tail a little bit longer, is go back one space. Don't go back into this spot. Go over to the next one and then right up through the center. But don't let it show on this side. And that one's secured. So now we're going to grab the next one. Now this one will have to go down because it's on top. If I can get it through little bit fuzzy. There we go. So we want to go down. We can go through the same one if we want all the way to the bottom, making sure it doesn't come through on the front. You can go across and then I always go back up. Then I definitely know both of these tails are woven in and they're not going to come out and they're not going to be seen. There we go. So now we got this intersection, the two corners and the other two corners, and then the single sets a triple in the middle. That's here, this section here. Now we're going to do this, which is basically the same as this, but we're going to do three doubles in each of these spaces along with the corner three double chain one, three, three doubles. And we're going to do that in yellow. Like I said, I just hope I have enough yellow. And they tell you to start in any quarter chain one space and do your half corner. So I'll go into this one. I wrap the yarn around my hook and pull it through. Chain the first one holding both stitch, both strands. And I usually pull a little bit tight and I'll leave that to the back and do two. One, two, you know me, I don't do the third one. But if I do the third one, it might help me with my slip stitch into the half corner when we get to the other side. But we'll see. I'll just leave it where I normally do it. So this would be one, two, and three. I count this one as my first one. We do two more doubles. And this makes our half double crochet corner. 
And as you see, I'm holding the yellow yarn inside. So when you look at the back, it's woven in. Now you can't do it anymore because it'll cause that yellow to go across the top. Chain one, because you can see here, there's your half corner. Chain one, three doubles, chain one, three doubles, chain one, and then you do your corner again. Well, here they said chain four. Well, I only chain my usual. Yeah, I, I follow the pattern usually exactly, but sometimes because I know my stitching patterns, I will ad-lib it a bit. Now this yellow is Red Heart, where the other two are Encore Worsted Weight from Plymouth. So the yellow is going to be a little thicker, but it still works. You have to decide if you want to use two different yarns together, if they're compatible or if they're not. That comes with practice and age. I started crocheting when I was 13. I've learned a lot on my own. My great grandmother showed me the first basics in Iowa. Then we came back to Florida where I lived and I had no more help or instruction. All I could do was get a book on how to crochet and figure my way through it. I made a lot of mistakes, but every time I made a mistake, I learned something. And that was the important thing. You want to learn something as you go. And especially if you make a mistake, instead of saying, I give up, Try to reason out how the mistake was made and how to fix it. Or with crochet, just unravel out the bad stitches and start again. With Say if I made a mistake here, I just take out these stitches and put them back. I wouldn't take out the whole bunch. But that, of course, is your call. Or if you have a local yarn shop nearby, you can always go to your local yarn shop owner. And she, more than likely, will give you the instructions you need to continue on with your work or help fix your mistake. That's one thing I do at my shop here in Donnell in Florida. I offer all the assistance I can to anybody that comes in with a question or concern about their knitting or crocheting. I teasingly call it tech support because in a way it is technical for crocheting or knitting and it is support helping out my customers. And that's how I keep my customer base coming back by giving them all the help I can. Okay, I just did another corner. As you can see, it's really starting to take shape. And then we can, I gotta do the middle ones. One, two. This is like doing a regular classic granny square at this point, because I'm sure you can recognize that there's your three, chain one or chain two, chain, double crochet three, chain one, double crochet, chain one, double crochet in your next corner. Now, after you've done gone around, three rounds. If you want it to be bigger, you can always repeat this one more time around following the same instructions, doing three double crochets, three double crochets, three double crochets, and then your corner double crochet. And then if you want to make it one bigger, you can do another round. That's one thing about this particular pattern I see is you can keep adding rounds to it until you get the piece as big as you want it. Because sometimes you find two patterns you like and one is a little smaller than the other because say it's only three rounds and another one you like is five rounds. So if you can split the difference and do four on the three and four on the five, then they'll match up. So when you get ready to sew them together, you have a nice, smooth, even count. That's another thing that you have to keep in mind. Count your stitches along the side of your piece so you know how many stitches you have here. So when you go to match it up to a piece that's of a different design, you can count those stitches and make sure you got the same amount. And if not, you can always adjust it by one or two by adding an extra single crochet somewhere or single crocheting two stitches together to decrease it by one. There are some ways that you can, I forgot my chain one, that you can adjust your work a little at a time because um, I've done that a few times. And you can't see it in the overall scheme of things. It just blends in so nicely unless somebody takes a magnifying glass and you point it out, oh, there's my mistake. Then they're gonna see it forever. So you never show your mistakes or tell people where you make them. And if they see me say, well, that was your des design that you originally planned on doing. And they won't know that that wasn't planned that way because you had to add that one extra stitch. Okay, I'm back to my last corner. Chain one, three double crochets. Got 
There's two. This is kind of tight because it's in a chain one space. And this yarn is a little thicker. Chain one. Slip stitch into the top. And then, chain, well, I went over one too far. Let me go back. It has to go in the top of this one. That way you have one, you have three, you got one, two, three. You got to have three on the top. So when you get ready to sew together the next one, it's an even amount. There's my chain one to finish. Pull it tight. There. Now it looks like your Bloom and Granny. If you like what I've done, please subscribe to my site. Click the notification button and share with your friends. We need to get the word out that these granny squares are fun and there's so many different designs. I'm only on design number 9 out of 100. I'm going to see how many I can get before I decide I'm done making granny squares. But I've only done 9 so far. Thank you for watching. Oh, forgot. You weave in your tails just like we did before. Let me go ahead and do the weaving of the tails. Okay, since this is halfway done, how did I get such a big needle? Gee, this is monstrous. Oh well. Skip the first one like I did before. Go to the second one and then up. And that first one is done. Let's trim it off. Now we go to the second one. Try not to use a needle much larger than your actual piece because you don't want to make holes in it. Okay, you go into the first one or go into the second one. I usually go back one. When I do this type of a finish all the way to the bottom but don't pull it tight because you don't want it to get pulled down then go across the bottom a couple of stitches and then go up I usually go up into the last stitch and you pull it snug but not tight because you don't want it to tighten that top stitch because if you tighten this stitch here, it can make a little dip in your work, and you don't want that. Okay, now we're back to the finish. Thank you for watching.